Oh, hello. We're here again on the Chris Making YouTube channel. Explosions, fireworks, fireworks, and everything. <laughs> so, welcome to the Kirsty Meekin uh, YouTube channel. Sometimes I want to say Instagram channel, I don't know why because it's definitely a YouTube channel. However, we do yeah, have an Instagram like that if you want to do it on Instagram, Instagram. yeah, because yeah. it's that way. <laughs> but, yeah, um, we do have Instagram though, um, we do have Instagram. and um, Facebook, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Yeah. TikTok, well, TikTok, TikTok yeah. Year. TikTok and all that, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, today we are going to be doing an ombre and we're going to go with blue tones. So we've got a really dark blue and we've got a really pale blue. And I want to see if I have any trouble blending them because I know one of the products does um, have that marbling effect. So you know when the colours separate a little bit when you pick the bead up and you place it down and I want to see what problems I have and how to overcome them and hopefully help you too. So, let's get cracking. So we've got rocks in today um, and we're gonna do like these two. So we're gonna do the thumb and we're gonna do tiny finger. <laughs> Oh. I mean, it's tiny. Well, we'll just go on the macro, on one camera, macro lens for that yeah, one. Yeah, that like, we need a telescope, no, a microscope. Ma definitely a microscope for that tiny, <laughs> the tiniest finger I ever did see. And a thumb that's probably quite normal size. <laughs> probably probably about the same size as my middle finger. I'd love to see the difference, because you're going to do the same thing on both. Yeah. The amount of product you use on each one. Yeah, will be massively different. And it will show you quite a big variety of skills because we're going to be picking up different side beads we're going to be blending oh my god yes i do like it when they when they put me to the test <laughs> so i am going to let me look at that finger again so it's quite flat isn't it so let's cut the center tab like this so we've cut that off And then we're going to place this from wing to wing, winging it as always. I'm going to take off the length because with our forms we have them so, well we've designed them so they can be used for extreme length nails and also short nails. Let's have a look how we... God, it's the tiniest nail. Look. Oh my God. <laughs> tiny, tiny. But everyone's thinking, how old, how old are you? About five. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a five-year-old. Pinky. It does. When we're doing an ombre, I do like to put down a clear layer of product. And now because it's such a tiny finger, um, we're going to have to use a small amount of product. So we really need to be controlled with the product. So to get a tiny bead, one side, two sides, and then we're going to go upright. We're going to go on two, three, small bead. So because the brush was upright and we reduced the amount of liquid in the brush, it allowed us to pick up a teeny tiny bead. And I'm gonna press that out. And I'm definitely gonna use my 3D brush as well. because it's so much smaller on the tiniest finger in the world. <laughs> so just nice and thin, like that. So 
So the colours that we're using are these two. So we have Alice Blue and Bubblegum. These are from the Glitterama collection or brand, whatever you want to call it. How come they're in such like different pots? I don't, I don't know. Ooh, I don't like... know. I prefer this pot because when you take this one off, it goes everywhere. See so how it's all round the, mm -hmm. the rim. It's a little oh, bit, oh. bit problematic. So we're going to blend from that to that. Are you happy with that? From what to what? From this to this? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. I'm glad you said yes because. Uh, it's happening anyway? Yeah, very much. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put on this dark colour onto the very tip. And I want to go nice and thin with this. The smaller the nail, the thinner the product can be as well. That works like if it's a short nail. And then, super thin, I'm just going to kind of paint with this colour. I'll just blend that a little bit. So it's quite wet. We're literally using it for colour, not strength. So if you can understand why I put that thin layer of clear down as well. Because that's going to give you strength. Stay bloody still. Okay, so now with this colour, when you pick the bead up, can you see how you get that marbling? Yeah, like the edge is darker, isn't it? Yeah. Now this happens with lots of different products, especially when they're highly pigmented. So can you see how it's darker here? So I've sort of dragged it to one side so you can really see it. So we've got a darker shade here and a lighter shade here, okay? So I need to use it super wet so I can actually mix it a little bit more. So if I tap, 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 I'll get the same colour. And I can kind of lay it really thin. And again, kind of paint with it a little bit just to create that blend. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. So, wet and thin. So, tap, tap, tap. And as I'm tapping the back, I'm sort of tapping the bead as well, which is going to make it mix a little bit. And I'm going to keep coming down and stretching that down nice and thin. Let's see how it blends. So you want to keep your brush quite low when you're blending. I'm going to add a little bit more here for colour.
and again nice and wet so we can just blend that down a little bit more So it's not the easiest one to blend. You've really, I've got to use it really wet. With the tiniest bead for the tiniest finger. No pressure. Like that. Right, so she's going to pinch that a little bit. Felt like I needed a magnifying glass just to do that. <laughs> you make me go cross eyed. A little bit. Right, let's get the sculpting form on the thumb. Now, when you're doing a full set, I always recommend that you do the thumb last anyway, because the client always sits there with the thumb resting. So they'll end up moving the thumb. So imagine their hands like this, and when they rest, they'll rest with the thumb on there. All right, so with that one, because Roxy's got a nice little curve to her free edge. It's not so flat like the other one. That form fitted on like a dream. So while that's setting a little bit, we are going to cap it. I'm going to do exactly the same on this nail. So we need that little bit of clear. While we've got the clear out, I'm going to cap this, angling the finger down, angling the brush down. It wanted to stick then, which means I'm going to get rid of the rest of that because that's setting up way too quick. And if it's setting too quick, when it, if I'm dragging that product down and it's setting too quick and I start to drag it down, I'll actually end up with like a little shadow from where it's set. And I don't want that. All right, let's come back to this. So again, dark blue first. So I'm going side to side and drag it up nice and thin. And I'm going to go nice and wet. And kind of paint the rest of the blue up and blend it. So the reason that I'm painting with it is because I need it to be super thin. I don't want to hit it when I come to file. Right. And I'm not going to lie, this 
blue is not the easiest pale blue to blend so I'm having to kind of keep it moving to stop the marbling or the separation of the pigment and feather and I'm going to repeat that because you can see we've got nice pigment coming here but we need some more through the middle mm -hmm. so I didn't bleed my brush out I am using the monomer that's in the brush to dilute the pigment Look as we sweep across that and take away that pigment. It's very much like paint. Now, if you were doing like a French ombre from your cover pink to white, it's so much easier to do. That is probably one of the easiest ombres to do. But creating a fade like this in two colours that are really pigmented will definitely challenge you. But use these little techniques of sort of diluting it down with your liquid to create that fade. Hopefully it'll help you. Take that form off now. And we can cap this clear bead and what we're doing is kind of sandwiching the colour between the clear layers so we've got that very thin clear layer underneath and then we've got this cap of clear layer as well and the clear acrylic is going to give it the strength It'll also protect your blend, won't it? It does, so when you come to file, it's going to protect the blend. If you don't spend all that time doing your blend. <laughs> oh, believe me, it's, hap it yeah, it's happened before. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen again. Make sure you clean your brush after. I mean, if you're using really pigmented powders, it's so important to clean your brush because else you're going to leave a residue in the brush of that colour. So if we look at there, still quite sticky, yeah? It's bouncy, so it's still pinchable, but it's still a little bit too sticky and it's probably going to take another one, 25, 30 seconds before it changes. And that's how short that gap is between being able to pinch it and not pinch it. Because we're nearly there. But the more contact you make with the product, the faster it'll start to set because your fingers are warm. That makes sense? So it'll, it'll heat it up even more. I'm just going to go in where the natural nail meets the extension. I'm not going to pinch this bit yet because this bit will still be a little bit spongy because it's further away it's the most distal point from the finger so it'll take longer to cure well, i can go on now so normal filing routine is side walls first then the cuticle area free edge and then contour the top surface
and let's get the metal file to come right in there because it's so thin it'll get it even sharper let's check this yeah that's gone we can take this form off make you a little bit more comfortable did it feel uncomfortable does it feel uncomfortable that is what it did on the pinky what the form or the pinching? The pinching. Ah, but what about the, the form? Does the form feel uncomfortable? No. no. Right. Softly, softly as we go round this cuticle area because that will have the least amount of clear over the top. And you don't want to start filing too much and end up filing away the pigment of the coloured powder. So file inside walls again, exactly the same routine. If you keep this same filing routine, your your legs are where why would I say legs? <laughs> your legs. Your legs will look the same. <laughs> what the hell? Your nails will look the same. I don't know why I said legs. Imagine if you filed your legs and they look the same. That's weird. Casey, what is wrong with you? So yeah, side walls, cuticle. Free edge. And then we contour the top surface. It's such a difficult colour to blend. I mean, the little one's probably better than the thumb. You know, it looks like it's got a bit of a shadow in it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just slightly little bit patchy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I would do? What would you do? To disguise something like that, I would. One stroke. Yeah, you could do something like that, but what I would do is I'd either put a chrome, like a mermaid chrome powder over the top, mm -hmm. or I would put a transparent glitter gel polish over the top. What if you did like a, um, like a natural as well? Because that would mask it a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but I, wanted, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. I didn't want to do that trick. Um, I wanted to just do the powder on powder and see what happens. So, I want to see what chrome we can actually put over that. We're going to top coat. So when you use chrome powders, you want to go on the top of a no white top coat. So we've got the Dazzling Mermaid one from Nail Gaga. So let's give them a top coat. <laughs> Is that little finger just touch my glove? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to use a sponge applicator to pick up the powder. Right, so we can pick up the powder and rub that on. Oh, this is nice actually. And you will still see an ombre coming through. It's going to make it nice and shimmery but it'll kind of hide any like of those imperfections. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. That looks so much better, doesn't it?
Right, let's top coat this. Pop me that in. It's a nice chrome that is. You could put that over loads of different colours as well. Because it just gives that sheen, doesn't yeah. it? It's not changing the colour, it's just sort of like I don't know, making it a metallic, like a, a reflective metallic type colour. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely out with that blend. Pop me that in. Bit of oil. Oil, oil. Yeah, yeah. They. Definitely look better with that on. Yeah, they look better with that bit of chrome. On the first camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm quite pleased with them now. So, it's tricky when they're so pigmented. Ideally, when you are doing an ombre, you want something that it has a very slight transparency to it. And that helps with that blend where you overlay um the other trick we've done before as well is using the natural color which is like what adam said earlier um but i wanted to because not everybody's got that wanted to make sure i showed you exactly what it's like color on top of color but yeah that chrome is a good trick so there you are guys i hope you've enjoyed this video um this is the last video for our little day today so um, Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm going to drive three hours now. Yeah, Adam's got to drive three hours home. <laughs> I know, and I've got to finish your nails off. So there we are. Anyway, um, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Ta-da, duck! <laughs>